noodle. To protect the sheep, you got to catch the wolf. And it takes a wolf to catch a wolf. You understand? Who is Rafael Perez, the Rio Alonso from Training Day, played by Denzel Washington? Rafael Perez was born in Puerto Rico and at a young age moved to Ju New Jersey and then Philadelphia, where after high school he joined the Marines. As far as I can be, remember, I knew I wanted to be a police officer. The rest told the LA Times last December. I just, just didn't know how I was going to get there. With the marriage and the military transfer, Perez landed in Los Angeles and in 1989 joined the LAPD. He was a squad leader in his academy class. He was a good cop and well liked. According to those who knew him in the early 1990s, Perez, who went by Ray on the force, began working on the cover assignments on the narcotics spy team. He partnered with officer David Mack, who would later be convicted of the bank robbery and the two bonded strongly, personally, professionally. Perez credit Mac with savings his life during a buy that turned deadly. In 1995, Perez joined a Rampart anti-gang crash unit there. Perez says he discovered and faintly became immersed in a cauldron of police misconduct. According to Perez, he first began stealing drug money at urging of his partner Nino Durden. Durden has told the federal investigators that Perez was the instigator. One thing led to the next, and by 1998, Perez was stealing and dealing pounds of cocaine. Arrested and facing the prospect of a lengthy prison sentence, Perez cut a deal with the prosecutors and in the course of 35 interviews, began to unspool a story of widespread police misconduct. Believe me when I tell you, if there was 15 officers in a crash, 13 of them were putting cases on people. At his sentencing in February 2000, Perez marked his version of what went wrong. He offered apologies and accepted the blame, but he also blamed the intoxicant police power, the U.S. against them ethos of overzealous cop. Began to consume me, and the ends justify the means, he told the court. He vaguely sensed we were doing the wrong things for the right reasons. Time and again, I stepped over that line. Once crossed, I heard it over it again and again, landing with both feet sometimes on innocent persons. My job became intoxicant that I lost ever. While investigators have corroborated some of what Perez had a legit, they have also, they say, found many inconsistencies in his statements over the course of ongoing investigation. Perez's credibility has come under increasing scrutiny. He felt ever question on the five polygraph. Two polygraph experts believe the tests were improperly administered, and several jailhouses informants have testified that Perez boasted on retailing against the LAPD and burning cops. He didn't like investigators have begun to believe that Perez has been less than truthful, even commonly artful in directing the course of investigation. He was very self-assured, very cocky, the type of person who Wanted to take charge all the time, said lead detective Brian Tindall. We knew he was admitted at this time, a liar, a perjurer. We knew he was a thief, he was a con. The best way of probably describing him, the best word I could use. You can't trust Ruffle Perez, says DA Richard Rosenthal, who prosecuted Perez and said on the most of the briefings, he's a perjurer, he's a dope dealer, he's a thief, among any of our other numerous adjectives you could come up with that would negatively describe him personality. Perez is no longer cooperating with investigators. On July 24, 2001, he was released from prison and placed on parole after serving nearly three years of his five-year sentence. Los Angeles Superior Court Justice Robert Perry ruled that safety concerns. Perez could serve his parole outside the state of California. However, federal prosecutors have cut a deal with Perez's former partner Nino Durden, whose testimony may now be used to bring further charges against Russell Perez. <laughs>